Thanks so much for joining me, Barbara. Uh, it's great yeah, to talk sure. to you. Um, you know, I know it's been about a year and a half now since, uh, you know, you were released from the UFC. Uh, and I know you said something to MA fighting at the time about, you know, coaching and training. So, you know, I'm just curious, like, what have you been up to in this yes. time since then? So since then, I have gotten my personal train certificate, and um, I, I'm actually just at the very, your interview is like perfect timing and perfect question for that, because <laughs> I'm, um, I am newly certified, and I have exactly started doing that. Um, I'm running some group training classes, small group training classes, and one-on-one coaching, um, and I'm loving it. It's been really fun. Well, that's cool. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Very exciting. And uh, did, yeah. you ever, did you ever get to do that marathon? I saw you were trying to do a marathon recently. <laughs> I am running in your town in May. Oh. I'm coming up for the Vancouver BMO. Right on. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I just went out and got 10 in this morning, and my legs are really mad at me right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. Recovery day. <laughs> Recovery day. All right. Well, that's really cool. So, I mean... I got to ask, you know, the big question really, does this, does this mean retirement from MMA? Like, are you planning a comeback? I know that you already returned from a lengthy layoff once. So, I mean, you can do it again. <laughs> What's the status there? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, the, so the first time, um, I mean, that, I mean, that goes with the moving out here, yeah. right? The first time uh, that I was, and, and I kind of consider it two retirements in a way because, so I moved out here, and things didn't play out exactly as I wanted them to, and I was struggling. It took me a long time to find a gym that I felt like uh, I was cohesive with and that was a good fit for me. And um, by the time I did, you know, I'd been out for a long time, and I, I was basically ready to start on the coaching path before tough and all of that. Mm -hmm. And I was working a little bit with that and started training with um, another fighter and um, then I found Eddie Grant out here at, um, he owns Catalyst Fight House, which is a pretty new gym as gyms go, especially for someone who is at my level. Yeah. Kind of a gritty old school style that was somewhat what I, like what I was used to from, um, Militech. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I, him and I just hit it off really well. And, um, I wasn't really officially with him or really even looking to start fighting again until I saw the advertisements for tough in my weight class. Mm -hmm. And when I saw it, I was like, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Whatever. <laughs> and then, um, I just remember like, just like feeling like almost like blowing up about not doing it. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. It was something about it. It was just like, you have to go do that. So I called Eddie and, um, just asked him, I was like, hey, do you want to help me get ready for tryouts? Um, and him and I, we, we'd not really worked together yet, but we, I mean, I've seen him coach his people. He's watched me coach somebody at his gym. Um, and and he was like, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll do that. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. And not even expecting him to come out with me, he, like, offered. He was mm -hmm. just like, hey, I'll go with you and hold pads and we'll do it together. And, um, I mean, he just, he was by my side from day one, willing to help and a great coach. So, um, I mean, that was kind of the beginning of, of, I guess, I guess you can call it round two, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> my career <laughs> or I guess the, the last little go. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I didn't really, uh, mean to retire the first time. It was just sort of how life went. And then I found Eddie just in time for tough, you know, which meant that I hadn't really been training super hard mm -hmm. for those couple of years yeah, that I was of course, out. Of course. But it was also one of those fuck it moments, you know, where you're like, this is something I need to go do. And I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I just felt like it was something I had to go do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the house was fun. It was, it was a good experience and I was happy to get a couple of fights in the UFC and at least... You know, for everything that I did in my career, it was nice to at least be able to put the UFC veteran notch on my belt, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, I think I, I really wanted to do that before I officially. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So, 
So that's it. Then I mean, if you, if there was an opportunity where like you know Bellator is doing tournaments now, that'd be another similar thing. Sure. <laughs> and you know, I mean, it would and... have to be a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it would have to be super worth it because even my little stint in the UFC, you go in and I mean, I'm oh, I was over the age of thirty seven, which meant extra medicals just to be mm-hmm. there, and basically my purse barely covered the cost of my medicals. Yeah. You know, so it's like at some point you're like, I'm 40, I'm putting my body through this, and I'm breaking even. Yeah. Like I'm walking out, but as time I pay my coaches and my medical bills, I'm empty handed, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like it's just not lucrative anymore for me. Um, and Victor was, they paid me well, but then starting over in the UFC, you start with a different contract, and it's just, it wasn't worth it. Yeah, yeah, I hear. Yeah, that. so yeah, do you do you still do like training and stuff? I know you said you got your certificate and all that, but like MMA specifically, yeah. go to the gym. Um, you know? Yeah, yeah, I still train um, at Fight House. Uh, it's it's less frequent. Mm-hmm. It's when I want to. Of course, of course, <laughs> no need. Of has to be you know two three times a day, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, also going to play with those guys. We have um, we have an up and coming fighter. Her name is Sam Hughes, and she's actually on the LFA card this weekend. I don't know if this interview will be out by that, but yeah, I just saw um, you tweet that. <laughs> I'll try and get what's that? I just saw you tweet that. I'll try and get it out quick. <laughs> yeah, she's um, she's a stud. She was a collegiate athlete, and she works super hard and extremely coachable, coachable, and just like a really great person. Anyway, she has a, it's, that's her first, I think, kind of hello to the MMA community. I don't think a lot of people know who she is yet. So I, it, I'm super excited for her to get out and show people who she is and what she can do. Um, but yes, yeah, she, she's an up and comer and one to note that's awesome. this weekend. If, if, you know, if it gets out by then, yeah, not, yeah. whatever. I'll but. try. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, does that mean... Any corner work? Because I know you've cornered people in the past. I think uh, Cat, right? You've cornered Cat before. Um, yeah, I've, I've and... cornered quite a bit. Um, and I love I love being in people's corners. And yes, um, this one I'm not going to be going with them. Mm-hmm. But I have cornered Sam. And hopefully in the future I will again too. Right on, right on. That's awesome. Yeah. So when you look back on your career, I mean, this is a very broad question. But, you know, like how, how do you view it? I mean satisfied with things i mean just i don't know what, what's something you would use to describe it i don't know <laughs> when you look yeah back. i don't know i i guess i guess i haven't fully come full circle like that yet mm-hmm. um again i have come to terms with it because i feel like had i not had a loss like that um i i think it would have been harder to call it Mm-hmm. I think it would have been, I've never had um, a loss that was that dominating before. All of my losses were split decisions. And so I feel like, like as much as it hurt at the time, and I, like I still haven't watched that fight. I probably never will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, it's like one of those that if it didn't happen, I think it would have been a lot harder to walk away. Mm-hmm. And even before I got the call, I mean, had the UFC offered me another fight, I would have I would have fought again. Yeah. Um, but after that fight, I already pretty much knew that it was time to call it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So like, if if it was just the Murphy one, you're like, no way. <laughs> if you got cut after that, like, yeah, I can't yeah, leave it on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I felt like I won that fight. Yeah, a lot I of people like did. I felt like I won that fight, and that was um, a bad call by the judges. I almost knocked her out in the second round, and I definitely did more damage. But I know takedowns get scored high in the judges' eyes, and she did have a couple. So mm-hmm. I, I know I know what they look at. I know, but mm-hmm. I still disagree. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, in my opinion, I think that you know you've definitely left your mark on the division because you know really you're a key part of the history of 125 pounds. You were the first person that everyone you know could like universally agree was the best in the world at 125. So I mean, that's something to be proud of, right? I mean, that's an awesome thing. Yeah, and it's, I mean, that's a, that's a crazy huge compliment, too, and, um, you know, I guess I didn't really even realize it at the time. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, I mean, I had my people that I always looked at and looked up to and thought, one day I'm going to fight them, you know, or you think, I'm going to I'm gonna be like that someday, and 
um, I guess when you're in the middle of it, you never really stop to think I, I, I am that person. Mm -hmm. I am that person for somebody else, you know? And, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's a huge compliment. And I think the first time I kind of realized that I had become that to some people was when I was in the house Mm -hmm. and some of the comments that the girls would say to me or, um, you know, the fact that I knew certain people were all of a sudden I realized people were eyeballing me as the one to beat in the house, (laughs) even though I've been gone for three years, which... You know, Even like, more oh, complimentary. <laughs> yeah, right. So, um, I mean, I think really when I was in the house is when I realized that at some point I had become one of those people, and it was, it was I don't know, kind of a cool revelation, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I do feel like I made my mark. I ran dominant for three years. Um, I was in the top ten for such a long time, but it was a, it was such a small a subset of fans that paid attention to women at the time Mm -hmm. that I I guess I never really, um, I don't know, I guess I felt like my, I never really left that big of a mark, but I appreciate (laughs) (laughs) um, hearing that you think I did. Hey, no problem. I mean, I think most people would agree, not just me, (laughs) but um, I think it's probably a good thing, though, that, you know, you don't, or you didn't think that way of yourself in the moment, because then, you know, maybe you would have gotten like a little stagnant and maybe things wouldn't have worked out the same way, you know, because then it's like, Hey, I've already reached the top, you know, maybe that's not what you'd think, but some people might view it that way. But then you had that sure. persistency to keep sure, going. Yeah. yeah, no. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, yeah. And I mean, do you have a favorite moment or fight from, you know, your career? I mean, obviously there's the title fights, which I'm sure are some good ones. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, for my early fights, my fight with Kat Zingano sticks out still um, for a lot of different reasons. She was, I feel like the first real fight I was in, the first person who was as game as I was, um, she was bigger than me, she was super talented, and she was pretty much the first time I felt like I got my ass completely whooped in a fight. <laughs> um, and then we became great friends after that fight, too. We became training partners, which led to a friendship. So that one is a pretty big one in my career. Mm-hmm. And of course, all of the title fights. Um, the one with Porto was a huge moment. Um, but for some reason, the one with Lizzie Smith also always sticks out in my head, I think because um, I was a fan of hers before I fought her. Mm-hmm. And so I think that was you know a huge victory for me for that reason, too. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. They, they were all, they were all different and important and fun. Mm -hmm. Special in their own (laughs) ways, right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So you're still friends with Kat then? Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. How, how is that cool? Is that cool for you too, to see like, I mean, being able to help, I mean, that's, that's a really cool thing to be able to become friends from, you know, getting your ass kicked by somebody yeah. and everything. Oh, it, but. It, it was. We, I think we both enjoy telling people when they ask us how we met. We're like, well, we first. <laughs> <laughs> and people in the fight community totally get it. But yeah. people outside of the fight community are like, that's a weird way to be friends. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but yeah. <laughs> that is so true. Uh, but I mean, is it cool, like, now seeing that she's, you know, starting a new journey in her, you know, career as well, where she's actually yeah. going to Bellator. And uh, she got I'm a- really excited for her to be in Bellator. Um, Bellator pays really well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's that aspect. I'm happy for her with that. And um, she'll have some different competition. Chris Cyborg just moved over there. And I know that's a fight that's, I feel like that's a fight that has supposed to happen so many times and never did. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, if they're both in Bellator, that fight will probably eventually happen now. Um, so that's a really exciting one. I'll, I'll look forward to that. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's fun to watch her grow. She's gotten to do a lot of really cool projects. She just filmed like a docu-series, mm-hmm. um, on why people fight and it's amazing. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Yeah. We'll see, we'll see what Bellator brings to her. I think it'll be very good. Yeah, it's definitely exciting. So yeah. So you, do you still watch and follow MMA pretty closely now? I mean, maybe not as much as when you were actually active, but, you know, talking about Porto a little bit there, I mean, she's a champion now. I mean, that's really, that's kind of a cool thing, you know, see her go on to do that too. So do you still, like, follow it at all pretty closely? Um, not, not as much as I used to. 
you. Um, I still saw the big fights, of course. But even when I thought I wasn't, I wasn't a very, like, honestly, I wasn't a very good fan. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> even when I thought, I kind of, it was kind of like the Super Bowl for me where I, uh, you know, I, I, it's more of a social thing. You go to people's houses, you watch the fight, you, you do your Monday morning football talk about them, and, and uh, but yeah, I've, I've never been a huge, like, sports watcher. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely more of a sports viewer, um, but I follow it a little bit still. Okay. About the same as I did then. <laughs> <laughs> Any goals for 2020? You know, going forward, who needs fighting anymore? You know, is there anything? I don't know if you're a goal setting type of person, but you know, what are you looking forward to in the new uh, decade? I mean, we don't need to get into that debate about if it's a new decade yet, but <laughs> 2020. <laughs> um, you know, really, it's funny. I just answered a question of like this sort friend of mine. Um, really, I'm just focused on growing my uh, the my athletic conditioning and personal training business. Um, I, you know, I've started running more, so finishing a marathon and, and finishing it and not dying at the end of it. (laughs) Um, and I don't know, just like really starting something new. It's always super challenging, but it's also very exciting. And so I'm sure I'm about to learn a whole lot of new lessons and, um, hopefully get a few victories along the way while I'm starting up this new path. 